come back and now we want to now that we know what forces do what are some of the forces in nature and so we can divide this up into the fundamental forces and then other kinds of forces so let's talk about the four fundamental forces that control the universe and I'll start with gravity down there at the bottom so we've been talking about how if you take a mass and you let it go uh, close to the Earth's surface, it falls straight down. This is due to gravity. So any two objects in the universe, as long as they have mass, they're going to be attracted to each other because of the force of gravity. The force of gravity is the cosmic force. It's the thing that's holding the universe together, the galaxies together, the solar system together, it's holding stars together. So anything that's very, very large, it's the object of gravity to hold it together. Okay, then let's talk about the electromagnetic force. So the electromagnetic force, its job is to hold the atom together. So that in an atom, it has a nucleus which consists of protons and then it also has neutrons in it. So protons and neutrons make up the nucleus of an atom. And then surrounding the nucleus are going to be electrons. Protons have a positive charge and then electrons have a negative charge. Opposites attract. So this force of electricity is going to be the force that is going to attract any object that has electrical charge. With gravity, it was mass. With the electromagnetic force, it's going to be electrical charge. So since the nucleus is positively charged because of the protons, and the electrons are negatively charged, they're going to be attracted to each other and so that's what's going to make these electrons have a type of orbit around the nucleus. It's also going to be responsible for holding atoms together so that if you have another atom over here, so here's another nucleus and then here is its electron, well then this electron over here could again see this nucleus and this electron would be attracted to it and then this electron would be attracted to this positive nucleus and so it would be attracted to it. But remember this electron here doesn't like this electron and this nucleus here doesn't like this nucleus so that means that the two atoms will get to a certain distance and then they will be stable at that distance. But the um, atomic force is going to be, or the electrical force is going to be the atomic glue. It's the thing that's going to be holding atoms together. And then, like for example, this table is solid because of the atoms being held together by the electrical force. Okay, then you also have the strong nuclear force. And so what's going on here? is that we said that this nucleus is composed of protons. So there's a whole bunch of positive charges in here and remember the protons they don't like each other. Like charges repel. So if it was up to the electrical force this thing would blow itself apart. So there must be a force in nature that's even stronger than the electrical force and that's the strong, that's why they call it the strong one, the strong nuclear force. So the strong nuclear force is responsible for keeping the nucleus together. Then you finally we have the weak nuclear force which is the strangest of the four fundamental forces because it has the ability of, to change a neutron into a proton. And then it can also change a proton into a neutron. So we'll learn more about this later when we talk about nuclear um, things. 
So that's later on in the course. But for right now, I did want you to see that the uh, gravity is the weakest of the fundamental forces. And what does gravity do? And then you got electromagnetism. And then you have the weak nuclear force. And then you got the strong nuclear force, which is actually the strongest of the four fundamental forces. Then you have some other kinds of forces. So another kind of force that is not fundamental is friction. So if you've got a box and you slide it across the floor, it eventually comes to a stop. That's because there's a force slowing it down. That's the force of friction. It's really related to electricity. I'm not going to get into it. Okay. Another one is called centripetal force. So that if you've got an object, and let's say that um, it's you have a um, a weight on the end of a string, okay, and you're going around and around your head with it, you notice that that weight is changing its direction. So it's going around in a circle. It's changing its direction. Well, we just said, though, that the reason why objects change their direction is because they're experiencing a force. So the force that is causing this thing to go around in a circle, we're going to call that the centripetal force. And then later I will show you the, the formula that uh, explains or uh, describes the centripetal force. Uh, another one uh, is the Coriolis force. And the Coriolis force is responsible for making hurricanes spin. And so if you're interested in that force, you could take a meteorology course. But there are other forces in nature, but you definitely need to know the four fundamental forces of nature. And so here are some typical forces, and it shows how big these forces can be and how small they can be. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we will talk about Newton's first law of motion.